Good evening and welcome to my laboratory. Oh, what you're looking at there is a slow scope display on the HP 180. Um, and what I'm going to do is do a very, very long period test of the hypothesis that the MOSFET Q1 might overheat and fail from overheat. So what we have here is on the bottom trays, well what, right now what I'm just displaying is the baseline scans, okay? So you can see on the gradical of the scope exactly where the baselines are for the function generator, gate drive trace, and the current viewing resistor trace that will show the current and the load, okay? So that's where the baselines are. It's tracking pretty well right now. And uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm showing a, a one second per division horizontal scan. One one thousand, one one thousand, okay? And I have the function generator set, as you see, to produce a really slow trace going across. This is just for the purpose of actually seeing what the duty cycle is. And uh, let me show you what the duty cycle is uh, on the A trace by giving it a little bit of drive on the function generator. Okay, so I tried to set it so that it's about 20% on. About 20% high is what I was trying to get. Maybe slightly less than 20% high there. Yeah, that's about 16 or 18% high. So, based on the duty cycle, this is very, very similar to the figure 3 very slow scope trace of Ainsley, which actually had 50 seconds per horizontal division. I can't, I cannot do that. The slowest that my equipment, the slowest that my scope will go, this particular scope, is right there. I can go down to five seconds per division with the, uh, with the RM503, but that's, uh, that's not going to prove anything. The function generator, though, can drop down by another factor of ten. So when I actually do, right now we're showing a, ten, or a one second on period, and uh, four, let's see, what is it? Oh, good. One, two, three. Okay, so it's actually a little bit less than a 20% duty cycle. So we have one second on, and then one, two, three, and a half seconds off. Uh, okay, let me see if I can actually change that a little bit. I'll try to get it a little bit closer to a, to a 20% duty cycle here. So. A little bit less than, a little less than a second on, and about four seconds off. Okay, so that's a good, that's a little bit under 20 per second duty cycle. Okay, now when I actually do the experiment, what I'm going to do is slow that down by a factor of 10. Okay, so the scope is still tracking at one second per horizontal division, but I've slowed the function generator down by a factor of 10. So now we're seeing, uh, what, uh, is it going to turn on, is it going to turn on, so it's actually off now, on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 off. So Ainsley was using 16 to 18 seconds on, so we're almost in the ballpark range of where she was going on there. We have about a 20% or under duty cycle and about 10 seconds on. Okay? So let me reduce the oomph on that and show the rest of the apparatus now. Um, okay, so zoom out. And turn on the overhead lights so you can see what's going on. Okay, so there's the tar baby circuit. 
Um, this is the Q1 MOSFET over here. I have it, as you can see, it's on a fairly decent heat sink. This is actually a good, compact, uh, high dissipation rate heat sink. And I have the MOSFET on there with thermal paste. And then on this side is where the thermocouple is mounted. You can see the thermocouple wire coming off of there. And the, uh, the uh, connector is a good, tight, Molex, tight fit connector for the pins there. Not as good as soldering, but still pretty good. Okay, and then that's sitting there. And then over here we have the thermometer. It's showing 21 degrees on the MOSFET. And then here's another little thermometer that's also picking up the ambient room temperature, 21.4 on this one. So I'm fairly confident that the, th the thermostat or the thermocouple on the Q1 is accurate enough for this test. Okay. And this is the inline DC ammeter, and then there's the one, two, three, four, five, six battery stack. I have it, I have the circuit broken right now for safety. And I uh, can't see the voltage. Oh, oops, sorry. Hang on. You try this with two hands. Okay, so the voltage is displayed. Up there somewhere. Where is it? Uh, there. 75.2 volts right now. So very, very comparable to uh, the system parameters that Ainsley's been showing. There's the Q2s. Okay. So what I am going to do then is turn on the system, and we will see what happens to the temperature of the Q1 MOSFET when we are actually giving it a gate drive. Oh, I forgot to say, uh, sorry, before we turn that on, in order to protect my function generator in the event of a catastrophe, I've installed a 50 ohm series resistor and a 3 eighths of an amp inline fuse in the positive output lead of the function generator. Okay. It doesn't affect what the circuit sees, but hopefully it will save my function generator if we should have a catastrophic meltdown. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and give it some drive. There's those Q1 oscillations, but we want to go beyond that point so that we actually get Q2 oscillations in there. And there's, there's the Q2 oscillations on the bottom and top. Oh, uh, let's see, the top trace is at 2 volts per, uh, per division, just like Ainsley generally shows. And the bottom trace is at 5 volts per division. So there's our 10 volts of gate drive right there, going across, right? 5, 10, and now we're down into the Q2 oscillation range. And uh, the MOSFET is already quite warm. It's almost too warm to touch. When the oscillation stops, I'll give you a, a temperature reading on it. Okay, we got uh, 67, 68 degrees on the MOSFET already. 75, 80. Q2 oscillations. MOSFET is now having a chance to cool. I can't tell you what its temperature is because of the RF, though. It's all Q2 oscillations. Okay, Q1 is now on, 10 volts gate drive. And uh, temperature looks to be 106, 107 on the MOSFET. Can that be right? Now we're back to oscillations. I can smell the MOSFET now. Whew, the, heat, the heat sink is too hot to touch. Okay, Q1 is on. I'm seeing 109 on the thermometer and rising, 122, 128. This test isn't going to take 
26 minutes to resolve, I can tell you that. Hundred and thirty three, hundred and thirty five, hundred and thirty nine, hundred and forty, hundred and forty four. That's the MOSFET temperature. Okay, Q two is oscillating. The MOSFET is cooling off during these periods, but ow, it's still too hot to touch. Q one's on. 135, 145. Here, look, watch. Where is it? Okay, Q2s are on now. Re uh, reading is unreliable. MOSFET is on. Reliable temperatures. That sucker is getting ready to pop. Okay, Q2s. MOSFET is cooling. Ow! Oh, I just touched it. It is too hot to touch on that little heat sink. Good grief. Okay, Q2s still oscillating. Q2s, Q1, 12 volts gate, 1 those are real temperatures, now Q2's back on, she cannot take the strain, Captain. One on 180, 185, 188, 191, 96, 200 degrees C. Now it's cooling. Ambient is about 20 degrees, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. Oh, and the load, by the way, actually is about 210 degrees Fahrenheit now. Okay, 204, 205, 206 on the MOSFET. Q1's back on. I'm amazed. The thing's holding 200 degrees centigrade. That is amazing. Yeah. Remember your mom's, uh, uh, your mom's uh, way to test whether an iron is hot or not? Can you hear that? I'm licking my finger. <laughs> that is one hot MOSFET. But it's still working. That's unbelievable. Q2 is oscillating. Q1's on, 207, 208, 210 centigrade degrees, 216, 17, 223, man that is one tough transistor, that thing is 223 degrees warm. No, I'm surprised. I'll see what the voltage drops down to. Uh, voltage is dropping, drops to about 70 volts indicated when the Q1 is on, like it is now. 22, 226, 227, 227. Q1's off. Q1 is on, 215, 218, 220, 
232. Well, we may be reaching a range where the, the MOSFET on this little heat sink is equilibrated at 230 degrees C. Maybe it won't get any hotter because we're letting it cool off a bit. I can smell it though. There we go, it's on. 218, 220, 223, 227, 230, 235, 238. And it almost got up to 240, so maybe it, uh, maybe it will die. Two forty, two forty one. Nice Q two oscillations. Q one on two thirty, two thirty five, two thirty. 240, 244, 246. Let's see what the, are the Q2s warming up. The Q2s are very, 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 they're just barely above ambient temperature. The load, though, has already pegged my little analog thermometer. It's at 2, 230 Fahrenheit, about. So that's 100 and Six or 108 centigrade, something like that. Now that's the oil temperature in there. Q1 on. 237, 234, 240, 244, 245, 248, 250, 252, got up to 252 that time. I'm telling you, I'm impressed. I didn't think that this MOSFET could handle 252 degrees centigrade uh, without failing. It's on again. 238, 240, 244, 247, 253, 255, got up to 256 that time. I think my connector will melt before the MOSFET fails. Two thirty eight, two forty, two forty four, two fifty, two fifty five, and two fifty nine was the max that time. You know, you'd be better off heating the load with the MOSFET than with the resistive heater almost, or putting the MOSFET in in your teacup with along with the load to 50 to 60 to 61 that time up oh, uh oh Okay, I'm showing six amps, six amps on the inline meter, no appreciable, oh wait a minute, I've got six amps all the way across it looks like now, what's going on? Oh, we've lost the Q2 oscillations, oh, 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 I'm seeing smoke coming up, smoke is rising from something. Can't tell from what though. 
Oh, it's not my function generator. Still smoking. I can't tell what's smoking. Okay, I think that what has happened here? Okay, it looks to me like the MOSFET has actually failed shorted right now. I'm not sure what's going on. Wait a minute. The ones are still good. This MOSFET is ridiculously hot. Okay, I'm going to have to call a halt to the experiment and try to figure out what has happened because something has certainly happened. We've experienced some kind of a failure. And i got to see what it is. So thank you for watching. Okay, uh, damage report. There's the melted spot in the floor of my box that the MOSFET did. I unplugged it and there, 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 it was kind of hard to unplug, the connector was a bit melted. Here's my MOSFET test board with a good MOSFET in there. It's receiving 12 volts from the power supply and if I turn up the knob I think you can see that the light lights brightly. You see that? So we have a MOSFET that's not open, not shorted, and it operates in the linear conductance region properly, right? Now let's test the other one. Oops, sorry about that. You try this with one hand. Okay, this one is still pretty warm, but it's, it has cooled off quite a bit. All right, so let's put, whoops. That in place. Put the gin. Rehook up the. Uh, okay. And. Oh my. This MOSFET. This MOSFET has failed shorted. You can see that the light is on 100% of the time. Okay. That'll sure do your, do your load heating for you, won't it? Okay, that's it. You owe me $6. Thank you for watching.